whoever is traveling today and can make it um, can watch the recording. It's a good part of living in 2020. It's the record of every, everything. Everything can go viral. And if it does, I will have to leave the country, probably leave the world. If I get 200 subscribers, I'm deleting the YouTube channel. Okay, uh, so today we learn U substitution. Um, okay, uh, but before that, I gotta finish with um, with the net change theorem. So the net change theorem is nothing other than the fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, just interpreted a different way. It says that if f is differentiable, um, yeah, this is differentiable on AB. And continuous on AB and F time is continuous as well. Um, then the integral of the instantaneous rate of change is the total rate of change. which is nothing other than saying that the integral of the derivative is the original function. Um, so this is nice because before the, the derivative gave you the instantaneous rate of change of something, but we didn't have the way to compute the total rate of change. If you knew the velocity of a car at every moment, somehow we didn't know how to find the actual distance it's traveled. Uh, now we do. At least now we know what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to take a derivative um, to take an integral. So um, basically, when I when I went through that section on derivatives in sciences or whatever it was called, uh, to all of those examples, you can apply you can apply this theorem. So. Um, If v of t is the velocity of a thing, the integral from a to b, uh, well, I guess uh, b is the derivative of the distance. Uh, not is the total displacement um, from t equals a to t equals b. Um, I would say, as you say, this can be be positive or negative if um, uh, if the if the velocity is positive or negative. For example, it could be zero if you if you end where you started. So it's not really the distance traveled, it's the, the total distance you have moved. So if I move 10 meters and then I go back 10 meters, it doesn't, this integral is not gonna 
uh, it's not going to say 20, it's going to say zero. If you want to get a, always a positive answer, you need to integrate the absolute value. Uh, so this adds um, the distance you move forward. And the distance you move back. Okay, um, so that's one example. Um, what other examples did I do that day? Uh, the concentration. If C of T is the concentration of a chemical, I think it was, I was writing scenes for brackets like they do. No, probably. Probably C in square brackets sub T. Um, a time T. Then um, the derivative of this quantity is the reaction speed. And the integral of the reaction speed. Notice how DTs look like they cancel. Is the um, is the total amount of the thing you've created or destroyed? Well, not the total amount. Is the the changing concentration? between time A and time B. Uh, that's another example. Um, another one was um, the density. So another example was um, we have a rod with um, if we call the density rho of x, um, then uh, we saw, we said um, that rho was the derivative of the mass. So this means that when you take the integral of the density, uh, you get the, the mass between A and B. Which to me makes more sense than, than the other bit of interpretation, honestly. Because integral is sort of like adding and computing the total mass is sort of like doing adding all the densities for very small pieces. Um, and the the one with the money was um, if C is the cost of producing. X many things. Then C prime of X um, is what they call the marginal cost of producing more things that 
on top of x many things. The integral of the marginal cost is the difference between difference in cost between producing b things and producing a. Um, Okay, and that's it. Um, in all of them, <clears throat> the, the integral is the inverse of the derivative. Uh, so there is to it. Are there any questions? <clears throat> okay. um, let's talk about the really interesting topic, uh, substitution. So this is um, one more way to do integrals and to put on top of your only method we have right now, which is guess and hope that it's on the table. Um, so substitution, what it is, it's only the all, all it is is the chain rule doing going backwards. Um, so the chain rule says that the derivative of a composition um so the general says the derivative of a composition is a uh, derivative of the outside uh times uh, the derivative of the inside so uh well going for this is what i get for doing the derivative the integral the, an indefinite integral especially is just going back so um if if this is the derivative of the composition that means that whenever i whenever i see something like this i know it's antiderivative it's a composition um so I should say if if this is the derivative of um, f composed with g, then you, you go the other way around. Um, f composed with g. Is an indefinite integral of f prime g of x times uh, g prime. So, um, what it is uh, what I just that sentence in words says that if I take the integral of f prime g of x times g prime of x, I get f uh, decomposed with f. So there's nothing more to it. Um, there's nothing more to it. It's just a chain rule uh, written the other way around. Basically, if you want to, if you look at this equation, the first equation, and you wanted to cancel the derivative, you would, you would go to the other side as an integral because they are uh, inverses to each other. That's all that happened there. The problem is, if I'm faced with an integral, um, how do I ever tell if it looks like this? Because Telling that something is a composition is not that bad compared to this. Um,
if you look at, at this uh, integral, um, well, you have to you have to guess what f prime of g of x is and and g prime is, um, and that's really what this is about. How to maximize your chances of of guessing correctly? Um, so let's try to do that. Any questions? <clears throat> okay. Um, so the general says there's um not bad. The problem with all the derivation rules is that when you put them upside down, they become more they become more complicated. So the integral of x root of x squared plus one. So I need to decide. Uh, I need to um, decide what d is in here and what g prime is, I guess. Um, to to have so so that this will become and what f prime is I guess so that this will become f prime of g of x times g prime of x. <clears throat> Any ideas? Probably like G. I mean, sorry, probably like X or something like that. Because, like, um, since you're multiplying. So, which of these is X? Uh, G. G. Let's give that a shot. So, um, if G of X is, oh, if, you have, if G of X is X, well, then I know what G prime has to be. Um, it has to be 1. Um, so how is this going to be? This is this is not going to work um, because uh, well this is just going to be one. Then if you write f prime of g of x times um, g prime of x, this this would have to be x, and this would have to be one. So really, this would have to become f prime of x. So I guess this would mean that f prime, so for this to work, if this is going to be x root of x root plus 1, what this would have to be is the whole function. Um, and we haven't gained anything. So then I, what I need to find is the integral of, of this, which is the exact same equation I started with. So good guess, uh, but it didn't work. Um, so x root plus one, that's a, that's another good guess. Let's see. Um, so um, g prime of x is x root plus one. No, sorry, g. G prime of x has to be, uh, well, it's derivative, so 2x. And then how do I make, so how is f prime of g of x? Um, so this should be x root of x root plus 1. Um, so this has to be something where I plug in x root plus 1. 
and and then g prime of x has to be two x. So this is looking promising because at least there's excess on both sides. Um, and when I remove those hexes, I get that f prime has to be root of x over uh, two. So when I take these three things together, uh, woof, what do I get? I um, I get that f prime of g of x times g prime of x is the I need to plug g into here. So I get root of x root plus one divided by two. And then I multiply by g prime, so I get two x. And that's what I want. So uh, I'm out of space. Oh. So that worked. Um, You make g prime, uh, sorry, you make g equals to x squared plus one. You make g prime equals to two x. You make f prime equals to root of x over two. Um, this means that uh, f prime of g of x times g prime is x root of x squared plus one as desired. So that means that the integral by the chain rule is supposed to be g plugged into f. I don't know what f is, uh, but I know it's derivative. So um, f is going to be the indefinite integral of root of x divided by 2. And what is that? What is the antiderivative of the square roots? You probably want to write it as x to the one half. What function has derivative x to the one half? It's going to be x to the something. X to the I'm gonna guess that I'm gonna guess that's not 21 halves. Uh, I'm gonna guess that's uh, three halves. So since taking derivative takes one away from the exponent to take the integral, you need to add one. So if I take x to the three halves, the derivative is three halves x to the one half. Uh, so to make up for that, uh, I need to um, I need to get one third here. Not three, one third. <laughs> so the integral of x to the n is always x to the n plus one divided by x to the n plus one. If you want to look, if you want to use this formula, this is just the power rule going backwards. Um, so the integral of x to the one half is x to the three halves divided by three halves, which is two thirds x to the three halves. Anyway, um, I have my answer. So I'm supposed to plug in. So this is f. The antiderivative of f prime is f. So I'm supposed to. Um, 
for x, I'm supposed to plug in d of x. So this is one third of x squared plus one. And then f means you take the three halves power. So that's the answer. Um, and and the good thing about the the only good thing about integrals is that when you're done, you can check that you did it correctly by by taking the derivative, which you're not going to make a mistake on. It's a lot harder to make a mistake on the derivative than on the integral. <clears throat> Because um, it's one third and not two thirds because I I have a two in here, so um, I guess there's there it is two thirds, but there's a, already a two in the denominator, so they cancel. Oh. Matthew, when you said it's not one third x to the three halves, I don't know what you're referring to. Anyway, let's see why this is the answer. This is the answer. Um, so what I got was that this is the answer and I can check by taking the derivative of the answer. And if I use the chain rule, I should use the chain rule to take the derivative as well. So take the derivative of one third x squared plus one. You should pretty much always do this when you do an integral, unless it's super easy. So I need to do the chain rule. So do the derivative of the outside. And multiply by the derivative of the inside. And what I get is uh, that these threes cancel and these twos cancel. And indeed I end up with root of x squared plus one. So this was done correctly. Okay. Um, this was hard. Um, any questions? Any more questions? Uh, so this is not, so we can do the same thing, but write things a lot better if we, if we actually substitute letters. Um, so let me tell you how to do that. Um, so what I'm supposed to do is, um, well, it's this, this is the chain rule. But now, um, what if I call g of x equals to u? Uh, just kind of what I do sometimes for the chain rule, I replace the, I replace the inside function with a letter. Uh, doing this, uh, doing this is really, Um, it's really useful here. You should, this is pretty much a, a must um, when you try to do the chain rule backwards. Um, 
which is why we don't call it the chain rule backwards. Um, people tend to call it U substitution um, just because we like to use the letter U. So then this Q of X becomes a U. And well, what happens with Q prime of X? Um, dx um well what happens um how should i say this um i'm sure the best way i mean what I'm saying is that this whole thing should become du. So if you do this, which kind of makes sense if we if we think of well, still we're not multiplying things, um, but they just seem like uh, they work like by multiplication. If you think that g prime is du dx, then g prime dx should be du. And when you get what you get when you do this agrees exactly with the chain rule. So, um, what well, I should do, I should write it. Um, so the, the right hand side, so the right hand side is F of U. And f of u, in principle, if I'm going to look at this problem, I'm not going to know what f is. I'm going to know what f prime is. So f of u, I'm going to write as the indefinite integral of f prime. So this is um, the better way to write the, the chain rule for integrals, uh, which is u substitution. So you take any function, so um, any, fu any function, and you replace g prime of x dx by du. Um, so the rule Replace u by g of x and uh, g prime x dx by du. So this is the best way to do substitution. Uh, let me show you uh, in some examples. Are there any questions? Okay, so um, let's say um, the integral of x e to the x squared. So what I'm supposed to do now, so if I'm going to use substitution here, I'm supposed to pick a function to make equal to u, and then Hopefully, its derivative shows up somewhere. Multiplying. Um, 
So, I mean, there's there's ways. Now this is a guessing game. What G of X should be? You gotta try G of X's until until you reach one um, one that works. There's there's ways to make your guesses smarter. For example, you try to you try to choose something, some function, so that its derivative appears multiplying. Um, that tends to be the best way, of course. Um, sometimes um, there's more than one option. Often you just have to guess. So what should I guess here? What um, what do I make uh, g of x? X squared. That uh, seems like the best guess to me. Uh, because if I make u equals x squared, so then, so this is mechanical. You just, you take uh, u equals something and then you take its derivative. So du is supposed to be 2x dx. Um, and there's no 2x dx there, but if I move the one half around, what I do have is that one half du is x dx. So um, these two together are gonna make du. And here there's an x squared, so that's gonna be u. So the integral of x e to the x squared dx, I guess I'm just gonna reorder the product, is the integral of e to the u um, du by making u equals x squared. Just by doing this. And now can I do the integral of p to the u? So this, I know this works because I know how to do that integral. The, the issue was if you end up with something you don't know how, how to do, well, you gotta try again. Um, what function has derivative e to the u? Is it just e to the u? Yeah, it is because the derivative of e to the u is just e to the u. Thanks, Dustin. So um, I started with a function of x. Uh, I can't end with I can't. The answer can't be a function of u. Shouldn't be. Um, all you should do is plug back in u equals x squared, and the answer is going to be e to the x squared. So. Um, I mean, I did the same, this is the same, really this, the same solution I did for the other problem, but writing it this way, which is the way everyone does it, it's way, way more streamlined. The advantage is you kind of lose sight of the fact that you're doing the chain rule. Um, and it's good to not forget that U substitution is really just the chain rule, but for practical purposes, it's, it's the best way. Um, and and can, I can and should always check that I got the correct answer. Um, what's the derivative of my answer? The derivative of my answer is the derivative of the outside. Oh, okay, well, let, let, let's see. The derivative of my answer, uh, the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. So that's not what I started with. Uh, so I made a mistake. <clears throat> so what did I, where did I go wrong?
So where I went wrong was that it was pretty silly. Um, I said x dx was one half du, and that's not what I wrote in. Um, this was supposed to be one half du, and it just wrote du. So if there's an extra one half here, there's a one half here. Um, so there's a one half here. The answer should be one half of e to the x squared. And now when I do the derivative, I get I get the original answer. All right. And this is why you should always check your answer. But you take another derivative. Any questions? All right, um, right then let's do another example. So the integral of the root of 3x minus 1. So here, there's no, it doesn't, it's not a product of two things, unless I make one of those things one, I guess. Um, so makes it really not obvious how you're supposed to do substitution, but if you just blindly go u equals something, d u equals something else, um, it works out. So what should I make u? There's no wrong answer here, because the worst thing that can happen is that we try and fail. And that's just what math is. 3x minus 1. All right, Sydney, uh, Sydney is not going to try and fail. This, this is going to work. Um, so if, if u is 3x minus 1, du should be um, the derivative. And the derivative of 3x minus 1 is just 3. So um, there's no three there, so I could I could just divide by the three, or I could do this. This is also allowed. I could multiply by three and divide by three. That doesn't do anything, and then I have my three dx as I wanted, and and I didn't change the answer because I multiplied and divided by three. I guess if you if you do this, you're not gonna forget the three. Well, maybe you. I guess you can. So um, if I do this, I well, I have to keep that one third now forever. Not forget about it. Um, the root of 3x minus 1 is just the root of u, and 3dx is du. And now I have the integral of, of the square root, the integral of u to the 1 half. And the power rule, um, if you go backwards in the power rule, you should add 1 to the exponent and divide by whatever the new exponent is. So um, what I get is um, divided by 3 halves is the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. So um, in the end, I get 2 ninths of u to the 3 halves. And if I 
if I plug in, if I plug back in the answer, u equals 3x minus 1, the substitution I did, so I should, you can't split the answer with a u if there was no u in the question. Um, the answer is uh, this whole thing. So I don't know, maybe if you're good at this, um, which I'm not, you, you could have looked at this integral and guessed from the beginning. But you don't have to, because if you guess that whatever is inside of the square root should be u, then you can close your eyes and see where it takes you, and it takes you to the answer. All right, any questions? What's the point of adding plus c? Um, all right, so two questions. What's the point of adding plus c? Um, I mean, there's not much of a point, honestly. Like, what I'm trying to think, what could go wrong if you if you don't have plus c? What could go wrong? So sometimes. Uh, I mean, you gotta keep in mind that there's not, the, the thing is, there's more than one answer. This is an answer, and, you know, if I put a zero here, it's an answer. If I put a three here, it's an answer. But sometimes, uh, what happens is that you could get uh, two answers that look very different, but actually, their difference is a constant, and you gotta, and they might both be correct. Um, so, for example, if you let's do an example like that. Um, okay, uh, so let me answer that question with an example. Did you multiply by three? I think I did. Um, I multiplied and divided by three, but then three together with dx became du. But I'm going to check the answer anyway. Um, the derivative of this is, uh, well, the two nines is just going to stay there. And then the derivative of the upside I can do with the power rule. And then I need to do the derivative of the inside. Which is just three. And that gives me um, nine on the numerator. And the cancel with the original nine in the denominator and a two cancel with the original two. Uh, so this has got to be the correct answer. Once you get the right answer for an integral, it doesn't matter how you got there because you can always just take the derivative. Um, okay. So, um, how about um, we do? Oh, I have one minute left. Oh, I can't do it. Oh, I, um, Monday, I'll answer your question. Monday, I'll keep doing examples of this. Um, all right, well, uh, for me, it's my office hours right now.